Hello and welcome to this Electrical Principles training video. In a previous video in this series, we started to consider the subject of lighting and we started to discuss the inverse square law. And we looked at this formula here and we broke it down into its component parts. So just a brief reminder, I is the luminous intensity of a light source. In other words, how bright it is, how much light it's giving off in a given direction. And then we've got uh, D, which is the distance that the light source is from the surface that it's illuminating. And then finally, we've got E, which is the illuminance. In other words, how brightly lit a given surface is. And then we teased out that we were going to do an experiment to help us to understand the significance of this equation, of this formula. And we were going to do that with the light that we've got mounted on top of this tripod here. So what we're going to do now is explain how this experiment will help us to gain a deeper insight into this calculation. So what's the consequence of having this squared here? Well, actually, it leads us to a very interesting thought within the world of lighting design. So I've set up uh, an experiment here for us to have a little look at. And what we've got is we've got a light source that is illuminating a surface, as you can see here. So this torch is casting a pool of light onto this surface. Now, what's quite interesting about this is if we mark out the kind of... Um, diameter of that pool of light, if we look at what the distance is from one side to the other, and again this is about the point where the light really starts to drop off, so we'll use that as our kind of reference point. What we can do is we can actually measure that distance and figure out what area is being illuminated there. So if we figure out what that area being illuminated is, so we'll put that there and measure that up. Uh, you might not be able to see that on the camera, but that is 26 centimetres. So that's 26 centimetres. Now, for the sake of clarity at this point, I'm going to keep this all in centimetres rather than converting it into metres. And of course, that means that the radius of this circle, R, is going to be equal to 13 centimetres. So we'll keep everything in centimetres at this stage, just in order to, to simplify this a little bit. So that means we can now figure out what the area of the whiteboard is being illuminated at this point. So let's just very quickly do that calculation. Hopefully remember from school that area is equal to pi r squared. So we can say it's equal to pi times 13 squared, which means this is going to be equal to pi times by 169. And if we put that into the calculator, we'll find that pi times 169 is going to give us 530.93, we'll go with 530.93 centimetres squared. So that's the area that's being illuminated by the torch at the moment. Now the really important thing is to understand that the distance from the surface to the light is going to really define what happens with our light level. So we're going to measure that now and we're measuring this and we're finding that that is coming out at uh, 17 centimetres, and that's coming out at 17 centimetres there. So, the distance from the light source to the surface that's being illuminated is 17 centimetres. So, when we look at it like that, in those terms, we can say that this distance away, when the distance is equal to 17 centimetres, the area being illuminated is 530.93 centimetres squared. So now what we're going to do, and this is the critical point, is we're going to double the distance that the light source is from the surface that it's illuminating. So we're going to move this back until it's now measuring 34 centimetres away. So we've got that now at 34 centimetres. So we'll just get that as close to that as we can. So now we've doubled the distance that the light source is away from the surface that it's illuminating. Let's have a think about what's happened to this area here. Now the area has clearly got larger. So as we've moved the light further away, the area that that light is covering has got larger. But how much larger? Well, let's figure that out. So if we look again at the diameter of this circle here, this pool of light that's being cast, and if we measure that up, we should find that that is, yeah, there it is. So you can see we're now at a distance of 52 centimetres. 
So look at what's happened to the diameter. It's gone from 26 centimeters to 52 centimeters. And also what's really interesting about that is it means that the radius has also doubled. So the radius is now up to uh, 26 centimeters. So our new radius, our new radius is 26 centimeters. Okay, so when the distance from the light source to the surface that's being illuminated has doubled when that's gone from 17 up to 34 centimeters what's going to have happened to the area well the radius has doubled the diameter has doubled so what do you think's happened to the area well, let's do the calculation a is equal to pi r squared and then we find that that is equal to pi times by the radius 26 centimeters squared. So that means that if we put that into our calculator, we're going to say that pi times by 26 squared comes to 2,123, 123.72 centimeters. So, centimeters squared. So that's interesting. We can see we've doubled the radius, we've doubled the diameter, but what we haven't doubled is the area because if this had doubled, we'd expect that to be somewhere around 1,060 or 1,061 plus change centimeters squared. So why has this not in fact doubled? And in fact, what has it done? Well, actually, it's quadrupled. If we take this number, 530.93, and times it by 4, we should find it comes out at 2123.72. So actually, when we double the distance that the light source is from the surface that it's illuminating, we don't just double the area that's being illuminated, we actually quadruple the area that's being illuminated. Why is that significant? Well, again, let's really dig into this formula and start to try and unravel it a little bit more. So we've got E is equal to I over D squared. I is how bright the light source is, how intense the light source is. So if we double how bright the light source is, what's going to happen to our illuminance, how brightly lit the surface is? It's going to double. But if we double the distance that the light source is from the surface, what's going to happen to our illuminance? Well, because we've got this squared effect on the bottom here, and that has to be squared because we've seen what happens to the area that's being lit here. If we double the distance that the light source is from the surface that's being illuminated, we don't just half this value, we actually quarter the value. So if you double the height that a light fitting is from the surface that it's illuminating, we don't just half how brightly lit that surface is, we actually reduce that to a quarter of what the original value was. So can you see that actually a small change in the distance from source to surface can actually result in a massive change in the illuminance level in how brightly lit that surface is. So that's a really key point in understanding this formula. And we're going to do some calculations with this in a future video. But can you see here we've got E is equal to I over D squared. You double how bright the light source is, you double how brightly lit the surface is. But if you double how far away the light is from the surface that it's illuminating, we don't just half this value, we actually quarter this value. And actually that logic continues to apply. So if we triple the distance that the light source is from the surface that it's illuminating, we don't just uh, reduce the illuminance, the how brightly lit the surface is, to a third, it would actually become a ninth of how brightly lit it was originally. And likewise, if we were to quadruple that, you would only have a sixteenth of the illuminance on that surface. And the reason for that is that as we move this further and further away, the amount of area that that light has to cover gets bigger and bigger, but it doesn't just double, it increases by a term we use exponentially, which means it actually increases by the square of the distance that we increase it by. So key points to take away from this video, and we're going to look at this in a little bit more depth in a future video, we'll do some calculations and try and understand in a little bit more detail exactly what this formula is telling us. Key things to take away, 
Try and get this formula logged in your brain. That's an important one that you'll need to take into an exam with you. E is equal to I over D squared. Remember what these mean. E is the illuminance, how brightly lit a surface is. I is the luminous intensity, how powerful a light source is, how intense a light source is. D is the distance from the light source to the surface. Illuminance is measured in lux. Luminous intensity is measured in candelas and obviously distance is measured in meters. The other key thing to take away from this video is that if we double the distance that a light source is from the surface that it's illuminating, we actually quarter the light level on that surface. And that's something that comes up quite regularly in exams. So try and commit that to memory. We'll go into this in a lot more depth in future videos. We'll build on this formula a little bit more. There's also another formula that we need to look at called the cosine rule for lighting. And then we start to look at how we really perform these calculations in a more realistic, real life setting. So until that time, all that remains to be said is, thank you very much for watching.